everyone. My name is Mrs. Rush and I'm here today to teach you main idea and key details. Mrs. Menser will also be joining me in this video to teach you about main idea and key details. Let's start with the definition of main idea and key details. If you take a look here, main idea is what our text is mostly about. So as good readers, when we're reading, we're wondering what it's mostly about. It's the most important idea in a text. I underlined the M in main and the I in idea. And then a little tip that I tell boys and girls or a little trick is to help yourselves remember most important. Most starts with an M like main and important starts with the letter I, like idea. So main idea means the most important idea of a text. We're going to use this cookie to also help us remember main idea. So the main idea is our cookie. When we talk about key details, sometimes you'll see the words supporting details as well. These key details or supporting details help us or help in the text to explain, support, and describe the main idea. So these key details are the chocolate chips. So we have our cookie that stands for the main idea and then we have our chocolate chips which are our key details. This is what we're going to work on today, boys and girls. So let's try an activity together. Let's try this activity. This is our main idea cookie. Remember main idea means the most important idea. Our chocolate chips are those supporting details or those key details that support the main idea. Let's take a look at the words that we have. We have elbow, eyelash, shoulder, fingernail, thigh, earlobe, and ankle. I want you to think about what all of these words have in common. If you thought they are all body parts, you're right. They're all examples of body parts. Great job. I'm going to model for you how to find main idea and key details in this story. Our title is, What Do Police Officers Do? I'm thinking this is a story about police officers and what they might do every day. Follow along with me while I read the story. Police officers help people in many ways. They help people in cars on the road. They help people who are hurt. Children ride bikes. Children cross streets, too. Police teach children how to be careful. Police officers care about people. They want to keep people safe. Remember, main idea is the most important idea in a text. To find the main idea, I need to look for key details. I see that some of these sentences give me details about police officers helping others. For example, in this sentence it says, they help people in cars on the road. I notice another key detail, they help people who are hurt. I even notice down below how police officers help children by teaching them, where it reads, police teach children how to be careful. Those would be key details. Now what I have to do is think about what those details have in common. When I'm able to figure out what those details have in common, I can figure out the main idea. These key details help me figure out that our main idea is that police officers help people in many ways. And all of my key details support that main idea.
let's do this graphic organizer to help us figure out the main idea. Listen to each sentence. Decide to tell the main idea for a detail. Drag each sentence into the correct space. Children ride bikes. They help people in cars on the road. They want to keep people safe. Police officers help people in many ways. They help people who are hurt. Police teach children how to be careful. I remember the word help being repeated in the story. So I'm going to use that to figure out what which one of these might be a key detail. When I look at this first detail, children ride bikes, that doesn't tell me how police officers were helping children or people. So I'm not going to choose that one just yet. I'm going to go on to this next one. They help people in cars on the road. I remember the word help, boys and girls, being repeated. So what I'm going to do is move that one into our, one of our detail boxes. Okay, let's go back up. Take a look at this one. They want to keep people safe. That's another example of how police officers were helping others. So I'm going to move that one also to one of the detail boxes. Okay, I'm going to go to this one next because my eyes notice that word help again. They help people who are hurt. Okay, and I also remember the word teach. This one says, Police teach children how to be careful. So I'm going to move this one as my last detail. Now I'm going to listen to all of the details one more time and then determine what they have in common to help me figure out the main idea. They help people in cars on the road. They want to keep people safe. They help people who are hurt. Police teach children how to be careful. Okay, so for my main idea, this sentence up here would be the correct choice. Police officers help people in many ways. So now our graphic organizer is complete. And boys and girls, this is just one example of a graphic organizer. There are many that you can use for main idea. As long as you remember while reading that the main idea is the most important idea in a text and the key details or the supporting details support the main idea. Hi boys and girls, this is Mrs. Menser and as Mrs. Rush explained, we're working on main idea in detail today. And I wanna go over with you a few different features that you can go back to reread and look at and think about more carefully when you're trying to identify the main idea of a passage, okay? Starting with the title, you wanna go back and reread that title. It's going to tell you the topic, which is going to obviously be part of the main idea, okay? So you wanna really focus and think about in those few words of that title, what is this passage really going to be about? You wanna go back and look at the pictures and you wanna reread any captions. Those pictures are there to give you a lot of information. A lot of times if you're reading a single page passage and the author decided to include a photograph or a picture, it's very important, okay, because they're using a lot of the space on the page to share information with you and that's going to definitely relate to the main idea.
Okay. You want to reread the first sentence because just when you, as when you write a paragraph, you start off with a topic sentence. Your very first sentence tells you everything else that that paragraph is going to be about. Well, as you read, many paragraphs and passages are structured the same way. Okay, where the author introduces the main idea right in that first sentence. You want to go back and reread that. Okay. You also want to reread the last sentence because again, just as you write and you write your concluding sentence at the end that wraps everything up, many passages have that sentence included as well. So rereading that first and last sentence again will give you some clues as to what the main idea is. You also want to look for words that are used repeatedly and repeatedly means over and over again. So you want to look for words that are used over and over again that are stated again and again or repeated in that passage. Okay, And that word will probably be associated with the main idea and you want to really think about what is the main idea again and that is the most important point, okay? The most important information from the passage. So when you're done reading, this is really, you have to ask yourself, what is this passage mainly about? What is it all about? Okay, whatever the answer is to that, if it's a single sentence, that single sentence is going to be your main idea, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a passage together and we're going to use this information as we reread that passage to help us identify the main idea. Okay, boys and girls, <clears throat> now that we've talked about some of the features to look for when you're identifying main idea, we want to go through and apply that in a passage. Now, this is an article that I printed, so we're going to mark the text. That's why I have my pen in my hand. We're going to write directly on um, the passage itself. Before I start marking anything, though, the most important thing is to read the passage first. So, please read along with me now. One, two, three. America remembers. The people of the United States remember and honor our history with landmarks, monuments, and memorials. Landmarks are places that are important to us. For example, the Grand Canyon is one of the U.S.'s most amazing natural landmarks. New York Statue of Liberty is a landmark that has welcomed people to our country for many years. Monuments and memorials are objects created to remember, show respect, or celebrate someone or something in our history. The Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. was constructed to honor our first president. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial was created to remember our military service members who died during the Vietnam War. The Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial honors Dr. King's fight for freedom, justice, and equality for all people. As a country, the people of the United States understand the importance of recognizing and remembering those people, places, and events which shaped our history. Now we want to go back and we want to pay close attention to the features we discussed earlier when identifying the main idea, starting with the, t the title. And they have these handy little arrows here to remind us of some of those things. They want us to circle the title. The title is America Remembers. The first sentence is another feature that I always want to go back to reread when identifying main idea. And it says, the people of the United States remember and honor our history with landmarks, monuments, and memorials. You also want to go back and reread the last sentence. As a country, the people of the United States understand the importance of recognizing and remembering those people, places, and events which shaped our history. Now we want to go back into the middle of the passage and we want to find information or facts, details, if you will, um, that, that we learn from this passage. Well, one thing that I learned from this passage is that New York Statue of Liberty is a landmark that's welcomed people to our country for many years. I learned that the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. was constructed to honor our first president. And I also learned that Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial honors Dr. King's fight for freedom, justice, and equality for all people. What I want to think about at this point <clears throat> is if I have any repeating words, words that are similar, words that are important. And I went ahead and did this so that I already have them here. Some of those important words are words that I see repeated as in more than once. United States is here. It's also <clears throat> in the title with America. America, United States, U.S. Those are all synonyms. Okay, here we have it again. Landmarks 
is a word that was repeated as well as monuments. Okay, we also have memorials. Okay, which again, these are words that are repeated or said often. The word from the title remembers is also another one that I felt was important. They included that again in the closing sentence as well as the introduction. So that was repeated several times. What I wanna do now is I wanna think about, okay, I have all of these words that are repeated. I'm probably going to see at least one or two of those words in my main idea, okay? I wanna think about the details from the middle of the passage as well as the information in the introduction sentence, that's the first sentence, and the closing sentence, that's the last. <clears throat> and I wanna think about well, what is the main idea of this paragraph? And in this case, they're giving us the multiple choice options. And so whenever you look at multiple choice, you should always read all of your choices first. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was an important American. Well, what's this passage? Is that really the most important piece of information from this passage? No. Okay, and if I look over here, none of my important words were or repeated words are in that. So that would not be the main idea. Memorials and monuments honor our presidents. Again, is that the most important information? Well, not really, right? They talk about also the Statue of Liberty. Well, I mean, that is not relating to the presidents. Neither is the detail about Martin Luther King Jr. So no, that would not be the appropriate answer. Americans remember history with landmarks, memorials, and monuments. Well, let's look at that one. When I think about the words that are repeated here, I've got landmarks, monuments, memorials, remember. I actually have all of those key words along with United States in the idea of Americans. Americans are people who live in the United States. So that includes most of my um, key words here. It also includes words from the title, America remembers, Americans remember. So there are several features here that tell me, yeah, this is probably correct. And if I think about it, is that the most important part of this article? Yes, because all throughout it talks about what we do to remember significant people or events in history using landmarks, memorials, and monuments. So that would be the main idea. Whenever you do multiple choice, you always wanna just check and make sure that the last one, you know, if that happens to you, make sure the last one isn't a better option. The United States has a long history of important people. Well, that's not correct. It doesn't have any of our key feet, any of our special significant repeated words. So my first indication that this is the main idea is probably correct. Boys and girls, now that you've seen me mark the text, I'd like you to practice on your own. This passage is called Fun at the Beach. I'd like you to read this passage. I'd like you to pay attention and um, follow along with the arrows, along with highlighting or writing down maybe on a scrap paper some of the repeated or similar important words that you find in this passage. And I'd like you to try to write a single sentence that identifies the main idea. If you pause your screen now, or if you pause this video now, this passage should remain on screen for you to work with. Now, boys and girls, I'd like you to check your work against mine. I was able to identify and circle the title, as well as the first sentence and the last, which are important to reread when you're looking for the main idea. I also went back and highlighted important words or words that are repeated, like fun, beach, people, and sand, along with great time. Then I thought to myself, what is the main idea? Well, the main idea of what this is mostly all about. I thought about what it told me in the middle of the passage. I thought about the first and last sentence and the title. And what I decided is that the main idea is really about the things that people can do at the beach. So I wrote, people can do many fun things at the beach. If you have that, you did great. If you wrote your main idea, the beach is a fun place for people, that's a great way to write the main idea. If you wrote, many people do a lot of fun things at the beach, it's a great way to state the main idea. These are all different ways to state the main idea, and the main idea is the most important part. In the main idea that you wrote, you should have included words like people, beach, and fun. 
Those were really the keywords that need to be included in your main idea. If you did that, you did a great job. Thanks for working so hard. Next, we're going to look at a book together. So boys and girls, when you're working in a book like this one, you don't want to mark the text by writing in the book. Instead, you would use a graphic organizer like this one, where there are supporting details at the bottom, information or facts you would get from your reading, which then would lead up to support your main idea or the most important part of your reading. We're going to read a section of the book Tigers today. I'd like you to read along with me, beginning with the heading. Please do your best reading. If you get stuck on a word, skip it and then pick up with the next word you do know. One, two, three. A tiger's home. Tigers live in the forest. They spend a lot of time in the water too. They live in hot places like Indonesia. They live in cold places like Russia. Tigers that live in cold places are bigger than other tigers. They also have thicker fur to keep them warm. What we're going to do now is we're going to go back and we're going to focus in on some of those features we discussed when we were marking the text. Things like looking at the heading or title. This is a heading because it's part of a larger book. It, it's basically a small title within the book. It says a tiger's home. Okay, so this must all be about tiger's homes. I want to reread the first sentence. Tigers live in the forest. Well, this whole entire section is not about tigers living in the forest, so that's not the main idea, but it will relate to the main idea in some way. I'm also going to reread the last sentence. They also have thicker fur to keep them warm. Is this whole thing about tigers having thicker fur? No, not really. So that's not the main idea either, but it might relate to it. I want to look at the pictures. And here I have this adorable, these adorable cubs in the water. I've got this Indo-Chinese tiger in the forest, in the jungle. And over here I have the Siberian tiger running through the snow. Hmm, okay. So those three pictures are showing me tigers in very different places. Okay, I'm also going to pay attention to some of the words that are repeated. Tigers, live, place, or places is repeated. Okay, so I'm thinking about all of those things. I'm also thinking about what are some facts that I've learned about tigers. Well, if I go to my graphic organizer, I actually wrote some things down from the story. So starting in, the, in within the text, I thought one thing that was interesting is that tigers live in the forest. So I put that here in my box so labeled supporting detail one. Then I thought, what was something else that I learned that was interesting? Well, I thought it was interesting that tigers spend time in the water. So I wrote that here on my graphic organizer. I also thought that it was interesting that tigers live in cold places. So I wrote that here on my third, in my third box that's part of my supporting details. I thought about those details. I thought about all the repeating words like tigers and live. I thought about repeating words like places. I thought about my heading and the pictures and what they showed me. And I decided that my main idea is that tigers live in many different places. That's supported by the fact that they live in the forest, that they spend time in water, and that they live in cold places also. They live in a variety of places. So boys and girls, you're going to need to get something to write on. It could be a graphic organizer like the one that I have here. Or it could just be a plain piece of paper that you write down just detail one, detail two, detail three, and main idea. You need to leave space for yourself or just write as you go. If you need to copy this, you can take a second now by pausing the video. You're going to read and work with this passage from the book called Tigers in Trouble. What I'd like you to do right now on your own is to pause the video and to find three details and the main idea from this section of the text. 
So boys and girls, now that you worked on this section on your own to identify the details and main idea from the section, I'd like you to compare your answers to my own. I found three important inf pieces of information or three facts from the passage. Yours may be the same as mine or they might be slightly different. I found that there are less than 3,500 tigers alive today. I found that there are five different kinds of tigers today. I also found that tigers are living in fewer areas today. I thought about what those facts or pieces of information all have in common. I also went back and reread my heading, Tigers in Trouble. I reread the first sentence, Tigers are endangered, as well as the last sentence, three other kinds of tigers have already become extinct. I used the map. I also paid attention here to these special words in the box called tiger term. I found out that endangered means at risk of dying out and that extinct means a group of animals no longer living. I thought about what all this information was telling me and what the most important part of this all was. And in doing so, I decided that the main idea is that tigers are endangered, that they're at risk. That happened to be the very first sentence of this paragraph or this section. So you always wanna pay close attention to that. Oftentimes that is the case since the first sentence is the topic sentence for that entire section. If your main idea is similar to mine or if it's something, you know, maybe the words are slightly different where tigers are in trouble of becoming extinct or tigers are in trouble because they are endangered, those would all be good options as well. I want to congratulate you guys on a great job today.